Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I'm going to continue on with the plant review series, and per popular request I'm doing another Hoya. And the specific one that we're going to be looking at today is the Hoya Australis Lisa, which I know is a favourite for a lot of people, as it is for me. Now, let me pick up my mother plant, but before we get into anything, for the people that have been here before, welcome back. As always, you will find the section down below that you might want to jump to. For the new people that are just joining for the first time, just some ground rules essentially. So these will be my opinions. They will not be unbiased because by default they are my opinions about me growing my plant in my conditions within my environment and the care that I give it. My environment generally for most of my plants, this one not so much, is growing in a conservatory in the UK. This is growing in a window in a living room in the UK. So slightly different conditions, not anywhere near as much humidity because this one is specifically growing almost entirely above a radiator. But without further ado, let's dive into the first topic. <laughs> so for background with this one, I thought I would show you my mother plant. I cannot promise that I'm going to be able to hold this plant for the entirety of the video, but just to give you a bit of an indication of its size, you can see how large it is in comparison to me, and also quite how large it is. Also note how tiny the pot still is, but this is my mother plant, and I'll see if I can bring it in so you might be able to see some of the new pinkish leaves, it's unfortunate because they can be a lot of a darker, more maroon type of leaf basically, but uh, we've had a lot of very, very sunny days. I will try to intersperse different clips throughout the video, but yeah, I think already this is way too heavy for me to be holding up for the whole part of this video, so I will put this down and I will put different clips of this actual plant throughout the video. Ah, that is much better because uh, to say that that is heavy would be an understatement. But yeah, in terms of background on how I got my Hoya Australis Lisa in my care, if I'm not mistaken, again, the, the title of the video will have this. This plant is either going to be two or three years old, I think, at this stage. And it was two plants, and I will see if I can put a picture here of what it looked like when I first got it in my care, or what the two plants looked like when I got them in my care. I was able, I don't know why, I think I found it on eBay and I think there was a deal as in like buy one get one free kind of situation and I'm just like well I might as well. So yeah two two plants ended up coming which is always better with Hoyas I find sometimes especially because this wasn't a one or two leaf cutting. I think it had a, a bit more meat to the bone essentially at that point. It wasn't a fully grown plant by any stretch of the imagination. But two is better than one because you can put them both in the pot and you start getting a more full plant almost instantly. <laughs> and you saw how full that plant was. <laughs> so yeah, I got these two plants. It came in the post. It came, I think it was around summertime anyway. So it came in the post. I potted them both up. I potted them in a much smaller pot than what the mother plant is in now. And it's always been in terracotta. It's always been in my light aroid airy soil mix and it's pretty much been just living its life. It's a plant that I wanted to get for a long time. I did have the Hoya Australis and I still do. Ironically enough my first Hoya Australis or my only Hoya Australis that I ever bought, just the standard green form, did die off and it wasn't, well it was because of bad care because I shouldn't have tried putting it out into like nature and it did fine for the summer that I put it in but it might have been one of the plants that I forgot to bring back in during the winter time so it, it did die because cold UK <laughs> but this one is one that I definitely wanted to get and it's another plant like the philodendron painted lady which is the last review that I did and I'll link that up here as well if you haven't had a chance to check that out yet but this is one that, yes, the pictures of this are quite impressive in real life, or kind of seeing it in person, 
is way more impressive. The the leaves, to me, especially when it's smaller and you can really get that light coming through at the moment. <laughs> at the moment, mine's a beast. It's down below, so you keep seeing me pointing down. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a plant that when the leaves get that light hitting them, it almost looks a bit like it's stained glass. I think it's beautiful. It's not fully transparent, but the just the variegation on this plant is beautiful. And as far as I'm aware, stable. I don't think I've ever had this plant revert or anywhere from it. It would have, probably would have tried to revert by now. Yes, it has had the odd fully green leaf here and there, or, or a leaf that's predominantly green and has only got a touch of variegation on it. Yes, but wow. And and the the, the speed at which it grows as well. The, the Hoyo Australis is a speedy plant. And again, I'll touch a bit more on this, but this is something else entirely. But yeah, I think that's enough on the background on this plant. Let's move into the first topic. So I've brought the plant back up, but let's look at speed of growth for this one. And I did allude to this just a moment ago, fast. I will caveat that by saying fast for a Hoya, but also fast. Like, not just for a Hoya, this is a relatively fast growing plant, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. And the really surprising thing of this as well is if you look at some of these leaves, a large chunk of them is variegated and white. And sorry, I keep looking down because this plant, to say that it leans and it's not stable and it has almost thrown itself off the shelf at least four or five times would again be an understatement. <laughs> but very, very fast plant. If you want a Hoya that really will give you that speed, this will be the one for you. More so, I think, than any of my other Hoyas. Yeah, pretty much more so than any of my other Hoyas. And Again, I'll benchmark this like I normally do with a golden pothos. So if a golden pothos in the summer will bring out two to three leaves in a month, this will bring out one or two leaves in a month. So possibly even more, to be fair as well. It depends on how many tendrils you've got. And as I said, I've had two plants that are in this pot. So I get double that generally, but wow, though, it's it's insane. I've never seen another Hoya grow quite to this speed. As I said, it's very, very fast for a Hoya. Yes, I do have some other house plants that are faster than this, the Pothos being one of it, but not by far. And yes, I am aware I do have an established plant, so they do eventually start kicking in a bit more as well. I will see, I don't know, and I've recently changed my phone, so I haven't got all my pictures anymore, but I'll see if I can find a picture and put it here of what the inflorescence looks like. And this is not a heavy, heavy bloomer for me, but generally speaking, I will get at least two or three flushes of blooms in the summer, and each time it blooms, it'll be on four or five different peduncles, and they are very, very big kind of bunches of peduncles, basically. So, yeah, definitely, if you want a fast Hoya, this will be the one for you. <music> Moving on to ease of propagation, and this propagates about as easily as most other Hoyas. Did I find that it roots out a bit faster? Yes, sometimes, as long as you give it really decent light as well, because you need to remember at that point when it's no longer an established plant, and granted, this would probably propagate a bit faster because it's got a bit more green on the leaves, but a leaf that is very, very highly variegated and has got large chunks of white on it might potentially take a bit longer. You also definitely want to be making sure that you're using a fully mature leaf cutting uh, with a node essentially in order to root it out and not something that is very young and tender and generally the leaves are a bit more on the pink side and I don't know whether or not that's being picked up but you can kind of see the pink blush and the, the peachy blush there. Those leaves I find don't do as well when you're trying to propagate them and to be fair most of the times if you're just putting in a fresh leaf that hasn't hardened off for most plants it probably won't propagate as easily or root out as easily because that leaf isn't as adept 
at being able to photosynthesize yet enough to get energy into the plant and enough to want to be able to push down those roots. Not saying that it's impossible, but I'm just saying it's more challenging. So yeah, relatively straightforward for propagating this one. I have done it in perlite and it was fine. I've done it in pond and it was fine. I've done it in damp sphagnum moss and it was fine. I don't think if I've done it in anything else. Water? I think I did water and I think that was fine as well. It's not a particularly fussy Hoya and you will see that comment come across quite a bit of this video as well. And that should tell you something as well like the, I think I've only ever done this one and the Hoya Polonera which is right behind the camera at the moment. Both are relatively straightforward plants when you kind of get to know what they want. The pollen error more than this one. This one is relatively bomb proof, I would say. Correct me if I'm wrong and you have struggled with this plant and struggle to keep it happy. Do drop comments down below. I'm getting great interaction from everybody more and more so on the videos now and you're all talking amongst yourselves, which I love. Um, yeah, I think this, for me at least, is possibly one of my easiest Hoyas, hands down, to propagate and to grow as well. Availability for this one is an interesting one because when I first heard about the Hoya Australis Lisa, I would say four or five years ago now, people were just becoming a bit more aware of it again. And I don't know if it'd been on the market or in people's awareness before then, because we've touched on the topic that a lot of these plants that we think are new plants now weren't because they were plants that were people, there were people buying these plants in the 60s, 70s, sorry, 70s and 80s, where the, the bigger boom kind of happened for house plants. I don't know if this is one of them. I think the Australis, the Santa Green form was around since back then, potentially. But this one, when I got it that time further back, when I first, when it first came to my awareness, as I said four or five years ago, it wasn't that easy to find in the UK. I don't think it was a particularly expensive one because again, it grows fast, but it wasn't super easy to find it. And you couldn't necessarily find it in garden centers or plant stores or anything like that. I think that has changed if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm really bad at noticing plants that I've already got in my collection in plant stores. They all turn into, sounds horrible, they turn into a bit of white noise because if I see more of them and I'm just like, I've got that plant but that one looks so much better, I'm going to take that one as well. It needs to turn into white noise because <laughs> there's enough plants in here. I know, sacrilegious, but like for real, so I need to like figure out what I'm going to do to like get some more plants in because at the moment I have not bought a new plant for... A good few months now, I would say. And it's purely because I cannot deal with where am I going to put this plant. But anyway, back to this. It is a plant that has definitely come down in price or it's become more available. I don't think it was ever, as I said, I don't think it was ever particularly expensive. I think I have maybe seen this now in some garden centers and maybe some plant stores, much smaller versions, because obviously a plant like this, you could probably find somebody who might be selling their mother plant or a plant that they've been growing for years. And as I said, I mean, this plant is big, but I've not had it for a decade or anything like that. I've seen people that have had certain Hoyas for a decade and they're this size. So that gives you an indication. But mm, it's definitely more available now. When I bought it, it was very much under mid double digits, way under mid double digits. It wasn't a particularly expensive plant. I think it's even cheaper than that now for more plant, if that makes sense. So definitely not one that should be difficult money-wise to get a hold of, at least here. I'm not entirely sure what it might like be in your kind of local area, but obviously, and you, you're you all really, really good at kind of sharing what the price ranges might be in your kind of neck of the woods. Please do down in the comments down below. I love reading that. It's really, really interesting. But uh, But yeah, this is one that... I think even now, if you even if you do a tiny bit of searching, you'll probably find one and it's not going to break the bank to try to get one of these. So moving on to pests with this one, and I'm trying to see now, and I'll see if I can insert a couple of clips because I can see one at the moment and I will squish it, which is mealybugs. I've never had spider mites on this. I don't think I have ever had thrips on this. 
can't think of anything else. Yeah, literally mealybugs are the only thing. And these plants that tend to be further out away from the conservatory that has more of a mealybug problem generally tend to do okay. What I will do with most of my Hoyas, especially because most of my Hoyas, it doesn't matter where they are, the mealybugs tend to love them. They also don't tend to, they slow down the growth of some Hoyas a bit. But uh, the Hoyas generally tend to, at least in my experience, if they're relatively established and they're slightly more mature plants than just two or three leaves, they can deal with a couple of mealybugs, just don't let it get absolutely crazy. But what I will always do with my Hoyas, if they've got, and especially with this one as well, because can we can we can we talk about nooks and crannies and I'll see if I can show you the back of this as well. <laughs> yeah. Um there's a lot of nooks and crannies on this one. I cannot sit there and take a little spray bottle and spray some rubbing alcohol and get a Q-tip. I will be there for days. So what I do with this one and a lot of the other ones, I'll take them out in the garden and get the spray nozzle on the garden hose and spray them down essentially. Obviously I'll try to try to time it to be around the same time that they need watering so that I'm not overwatering a Hoyas because again, but saying that though, this one is one that is, it can be okay with that at times. But yeah, in terms of pests, really just the mealybugs for this one. It's relatively ironclad. So moving on to accessories with this, and I will bring it back up again, because for the people, for the OGs and the janky support team, support stick team, uh, yeah, a lot of janky support sticks on this. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> it's that really bad and annoying thing with this that I realized that the problem is whatever I put in them now because of the way that the terracotta pot is, and obviously that's the one thing I would say, is something like a terracotta pot or a net pot. And again, for the people that have seen the conservatory, you can definitely understand why I'm looking up for this one. Um, but with this, it is a case that I should have probably put a bit of a kind of metal trellis in it just to help support because it is heavy. The Australis Lisa, the leaves are quite thick and they are quite succulent as well. And when it gets quite large and you keep vining it around itself, there's support sticks on this and a lot of plant ties on it just to keep it in place. And a lot of the times before I mentioned that it will throw itself off the shelf that it's sitting on or essentially the window ledge that it's sitting on. I have to lean this against the window. And there are odd moments, you know, when you get your odd plants that decide to just topple over for no good reason. There's no breeze, there's no nothing. They just decide to just go, this is one of them. <laughs> and this happens in my living room and it's quite close to where I will sit and the TV is there as well. So it will scare the living bejesus out of me when it happens. But it is, and it's good, it's still touch wood. But it hasn't really injured itself too much or any of the other plants around it. Surprising because a lot of the plants around it are quite fragile. But yes, I would say with this, because of how quickly it grows and because of how heavy the leaves are, get something, invest in something like a trellis. And the one thing I will say with that as well, and this is a problem I've always had with trellises specifically, or even moss poles, spend that extra tiny bit of money to get ones that you can extend up. Because the worst thing you want to, the worst thing that you ever kind of want to be dealing with is a plant like a Hoya with all the tendrils and they've all in and out of all these kind of trellises and all the nooks and crannies and it will kind of vine around it and all these things. Trying to then up it up in terms of a trellis, go up in size in terms of a trellis and having to unwind without destroying or snapping the, the stems or snapping leaves off, which is nigh to impossible when you're trying to do that. Trust me, I have tried. So spend that extra tiny bit of money and get the ones that you can kind of extend up. I have seen some trellises that you can put one part of it on and then there's a second part that will clip on and so on and so forth. See if you can get them to be as sturdy as possible. The really flimsy plasticky ones might be a bit of a problem. And I mean, you, you can even extend things like trellises yourself. So for instance, if you get something that's a bamboo, uh, like thick bamboo that might be for the garden, 
you can then attach another trellis to that by just winding it onto the existing trellis that the plant's attached to. So that would be my biggest tip with this one is plan ahead for when it gets heavy and large, especially if you want to have a big plant like I do, you're going to need something that's going to be able to take its weight. I really don't know what I'm going to do with this. The terracotta pot that it's in at the moment is, is really good for this one. It is... I want to say root bound, but is a Hoya really root bound before it hits a decade? But yes, I should probably repot this at some point. I always worry a bit with Hoyas when you repot them, even if you only go up a size, they can throw a bit of a wobbly and they can get root rot really easily in my experience. And this is one of those plants that I'd wish I'd put in something like pond because the, the pond itself would have helped stabilize some of it as well because it's heavy. Whilst the soil now when it dries out, especially in terracotta, it is so light. The plant itself is so much heavier than the pot with the soil in it at the moment. But yes, it is a slightly smaller pot because I do find that Hoyas tend to do a bit better when they're a bit more restricted. They don't need huge, huge pots. But yeah, I think that's the big thing with this one. Fertilize with my liquid gold leaf. And I will do that every second watering, even in the winter. I find Hoyas do like to get fertilized kind of weekly, quite regularly. So yeah, I think that's the, the big accessories that I would say on this. Essentially, well, I've said it enough times, trellis or something to hold it up for when it gets big. Trust me, it gets top heavy really quickly. So coming into final thoughts for this one. And it might not be surprising when I do the usual two scorings that I'll give. So knowing what I know now about this plant, and if I didn't have it and I came across it, would I get it? 100% with this one. There is no doubt in my mind that I would keep buying this plant. And essentially, this is the type of plant, and I hesitate slightly with this one, but if somebody was trying to get into a Hoya, there's a lot of other plants that people would kind of suggest to them. I might suggest this one to them, even if they've never had a Hoya before, because in my experience, some of the ones, and I, and I will caveat this and say I've never had the green Hoya Carnosa, the, just the standard green one, aren't any easier than this is. So, and I think this will probably keep that fascination going for a bit longer for somebody who's just maybe getting into Hoyas because the leaves and they'll do things and there's excitement that happens and all of these things. Yes, 100% I would repurchase this plant and I would do that every single time. <laughs> now in terms of score from zero or one being the worst, 10 being the best, where would I rank this? An eight on a nine. It is definitely one of my top, top plants. I do love it to bits. It just brings me a lot of joy still, even after however many years there is. And there's something about a plant that can have different forms that I, I kind of really like about it. And this one I find has a bit of personality. It'll throw itself, it'll have a tantrum and throw itself off the shelf. <laughs> but yeah, the fact that the leaves have got that beautiful variegation, the, that you kind of can almost look like stained glass, and the fact that they come in that peachy, pinky, almost burgundy color when they're really, really baby leaves and the blooms are beautiful and they smell great. There is, there's not a lot of things that I can say to fault this plant. The fault lies with me and I should have given it something stronger to climb up on now so it doesn't throw a tantrum and throw itself off its shelf. <laughs> that's a bad, that's a me bad rather than the plant bad. But yeah, I think, I think that's everything that I wanted to say about the Hoya Australis Lisa. Hopefully a lot of you might already have this plant or even the people that are looking to purchase this plant. Do feel free to share your reviews and your experiences with this plant down below. I have been proven time and time again for plants that I think might be straightforward or relatively easy or relatively available for a lot of people at this point. It never ceases to amaze me but that that's not, there, there are no absolutes so your experience matters. Just throw it down below because I might have not struggled with this plant, but other people might be struggling with this plant. So yeah, hopefully 
this has been useful and entertaining and hopefully you've enjoyed and I hope that I shall see you here soon. Thanks. Bye.